you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Emancipation Proclamation. And of course, we have with us to talk about the Emancipation Proclamation, Dr. Revis Mitchell, professor of history at Fisk University. And Dr. Mitchell, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. It's always a pleasure to join your audience, and it's certainly a worthy topic. You know, Dr. Mitchell, I think that we've had you on uh, many, many occasions. Yes. And as a matter of fact, I think we've had you here talking about the Emancipation Proclamation yeah. before. And I think that that uh, sort of illustrates uh, not only the importance of the Emancipation Proclamation and Lincoln's birthday and all of those things that are coming up, but it also illustrates the kind of uh, information that you have and the quality of the information that you generally bring to us. You know, we wouldn't have had you back uh, talking about the Emancipation Proclamation if we did not believe that you brought us some uh, quality information. And well, thank, you, you do often uh, thank you for your bring kindness. that kind of information to us. Thank you for your kindness, us. Dr. Haney. It's easy to bring good information when the interviewer asks good questions. You know, oh, very good. Dr. <laughs> Mitchell, now, you know, uh, to talk, to begin uh, the Emancipation Proclamation and, and honor, and, and to look at it from the point of view in honor of uh, President Lincoln's yes. uh, birthday, because after all, uh, it was uh, President Abraham Lincoln who uh, issued the Emancipation Proclamation, That's and right. we're going to talk about that as an issue this morning. But let's uh, have you, before we get into that, to uh, talk about uh, Dr. Revis Mitchell, to give us some information about your background right. and your education right. and some of the things that helped to uh, uh, prepare you to sit in that chair and to talk about uh, what we're going to talk about this morning, uh, the Emancipation Proclamation and, 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 and that kind of information. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Haney. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your show again. It's a pleasure to be a part of this activity here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm very proud to be a native Nashvilleian. My, my family has been here about four or five generations now. And, uh, I was educated in the Catholic and public schools here in Nashville, attended Fisk, where I've been on the faculty now for almost 20 years. Uh, attended and received my master's degree at Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. uh, traveled about 35 miles down the road and got my doctorate at, at MTSU. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, a product of, of the history education function here in this part of, mm -hmm. of Middle Tennessee. Um, then, of course, traveled, traveled to, been to Harvard and several other graduate programs. Mm -hmm. But it was the sound basis that I got here, uh, which has always instilled in me a great appreciation and, and a, a really a love of history. Uh, throughout my professional career, I've been in and out of the classroom. I've held administrative positions at Fisk University and Aquinas uh, College, mm -hmm. but I've never left the classroom. I, I think that American history is so important. Um, young people who are educated in America must have a grasp of their history, a good mm -hmm. fundamental grasp. And, and quite honestly, sometimes we educate people to their professions, yeah. but we miss that broad liberal education. And, it's such a wonderful country that we live in. Mm -hmm. It's important that we have an appreciation and an understanding mm -hmm. and a firm understanding of our history. Mm -hmm. So again, programs like this, which jog the public's interest and, and continue to bring up historically important topics, I think are most relevant and most needed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Mitchell, let's uh, talk about the Emancipation Proclamation, which was uh, issued by uh, President Abraham Lincoln in the middle of the Civil War that started in 1861 and ended in 1865. Uh, but uh, before we get into the issuance of that emancipation, let's look at the subjects All right. of uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, because oftentimes I think people become involved with talking about the Emancipation Proclamation without recognizing that, uh, for the most part, you're talking about more than four million slaves. That's right. Therefore, let's talk about the institution of slavery that uh, eventually led to this whole conflict that eventually caused right. the proclamation to be issued. Four million slaves and in an institution that by the time it ended had existed for almost 200 years, mm -hmm. over 200 years. Slavery as it will come to exist in the southern part of the United States, plantation slavery, mass labor slavery, uh, never existed any place in the world in that same manner. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you've had slavery among the peoples. You had slavery of biblical people, ancient world. Uh, the first slaves, the first African slaves, of the modern slave trade, and that's what we're talking about, this is the modern slave trade, were actually slaves probably in Africa before they were brought to America. Uh, the great misconception is that uh, free people were all the beginnings of slavery. No, they were slaves. For whatever reason, you might become a slave in Africa. Uh, losing in a combat or a battle, uh, you might wish to enslave yourself because of economic conditions, but there were several reasons that led to slavery. So that was a slavery that produced those original 
uh, African Americans who would become a part of the American spectrum in 1619. Uh, there's a very famous textbook by an author, Laurent Bennett. It's called Before the Mayflower, mm -hmm. because the first Africans arrived in the New World one year before the Mayflower mm -hmm. in 1620. They arrived in 1619. Mm -hmm. They didn't immediately go into the slavery that we identify later as Southern slavery. But they were like other bond servants or indentured servants. But because of tobacco, because of the importance of this one crop, because of the mass need for labor and the profitability of tobacco, we see developing bond slavery in a different way. Mm -hmm. Slavery forever. We see laws in early Virginia making the Negro a slave for life. Mm -hmm. So this was the slavery that evolved in the New World, uh, which was very profitable. Uh, slavery was always very profitable, and that's what slavery was about. It was about profit. Uh, slavery only benefited the slave master. Uh, as the institution becomes more widespread, as the institution becomes more brutal, as the institution becomes more inhumane, we see other points pressed about the good of slavery. But, but at this point, this morning, uh, as I have for almost 30 years now, mm -hmm. there was no benefit in slavery mm -hmm. for the slave. Mm -hmm. The benefit was totally for the master and the master mm -hmm. class. Slavery will build the economy of colonial Virginia. Slavery then builds the economy of colonial Maryland. Mm -hmm. Slavery builds the economy of colonial South Carolina. In fact, many authors today point out that if it were not for the slave trade, the economy mm -hmm. of the new world of the English colonies mm -hmm. wouldn't have existed. Mm -hmm. Part of the South benefited from the agriculture of slavery. The other part of the South benefited from carrying the slaves. Excuse me, the other part of the North. The Northeast carried the slaves. There was production and manufacture to trade for slaves. So it's on the backs of these African slaves that we see the early American economy develop. And so in a real sense, all of this labor and all of the activity in tobacco and all of the activities, sugar and all of those things right. that uh, the uh, slave was involved in, uh, all of this is, in a real sense, free labor. That's right. Uh, is it not? Which is to say that the it's profits, captive. yeah, that comes out of this labor, can be invested in other areas. That's and as a matter right. of fact, some historians even go so far as to say that this helped to what create uh, conditions for the so-called industrial revolution, That's right. et cetera. That's right. That's right. And so, in a real sense, the industrial revolution is really based and built and upon financed the by uh, of slave, of slave yes, labor. Yes, yeah. yes, so that yes. was the crucial. That was the, the, kind of the early industry in New England. Mm -hmm. The major industry was distilling. Mm -hmm. Well, rum was distilled to trade for slaves. Mm -hmm. One of the major industries was fishing. Those fish were transported to the Caribbean, where slaves were being held and working the sugar areas. Mm -hmm. Shipbuilding. Ships were built originally to bring slaves. So you're right, much of so that all, it, all, much, much of that activity, it's, yes. the, the, slave, the international slave trade, in a real sense, almost served as a basic kind of industry. An economic, in that's right. And mm -hmm. not only built the new world, but also reinvigorated the economy of England. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Very good. So uh, now, uh, the issue of the war then in 1861, who, who, so what we're saying is that this institution lasted. Well, go, go on. Well, e even though it economically fueled the development of the New World, uh, the North and the South developed very differently. You make the point of the Industrial Revolution. And the great irony is that slavery might have died out if not for the invention of the cotton gin. Mm -hmm. Post the American Revolution, um, 1701, very important date, Eli Whitney, that cotton gin. But in the North, the economy develops around industry. And in the South, the economy remains agricultural. Mm -hmm. And the South's agriculture could not exist without mass slave labor mm -hmm. and be profitable. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. It's about the profitability about of slavery, the ability exactly. to exactly. put a gang of folks into the field and then to get that uh, profit mass out of profit. that. Mass and profit. then use that profit instead of paying them to invest, invest. and continue then continue. Even the profit of the sale of slaves. Because once a master owns enough slaves, he can begin to produce children are born. They are an industry. They can be resold. Good. And, and of course, Dr. Mitchell, let us take our, take our first uh, commercial break at this point. And we'll be back with you following this short commercial break. And the guest is Dr. Revis Mitchell.